You're watching a show dedicated to charitable discussions, debates, interviews, commentary, and analysis. The show concentrates on theological topics, historical matters, and philosophical problems with content ranging from introductory material to in-depth examinations. And now, your host, Michael Lofton. Welcome back to Reason and Theology, everyone. Your host, Michael. Well, we got some good news today. Good news on a Friday. Uh, it actually came out yesterday. Um, but good news for us today who are uh, learning about it today. <laughs> Although I read about it last night. Uh, well, I'm happy to say that it looks like that the Holy See is continuing to reign in the German bishops especially when it comes to their understanding of synodality, church structure, doctrine. There have been some attempts so far by the Holy See to rein them in, and it's continuing, which is a good thing. I've, uh, I've been criticizing charitably um, the Pope and the Holy See for not doing as much as it could to rein them in. And I think more work still needs to be done. I'm part of the Holy See in this area. But I'll say at least we have this. It's good. So good news here. Let me share my screen and let's read what the Holy See issued yesterday. And then I want to read an article from uh, National Catholic Register. Um, so here's what it says. It's, it's a short, short one here. But hey, better than nothing right now. Again, I think we need we need to do more, but I'm not going to complain. Holy See statement uh, from yesterday, July 21st, 2022. This is the English translation. In order to protect the freedom of the people of God and the exercise of the Episcopal ministry, it would appear necessary to clarify that the synodal way in Germany does not have the power to compel the bishops and the faithful to adopt new ways of governance and new approaches to doctrine and morals. Thank you. Thank you. You would think it goes without saying. <laughs> you would think it wouldn't be necessary for the Holy See to say that. And yet we're at a point where it's necessary to say the very basics. Glad to see this. I've had some people from Germany very confused saying, hey, do I need to obey my bishops on this or that? Well. Although I said no in those areas where they are going against the magisterium. No, you don't. Here's something authoritative for you. Prior to an agreed understanding at the level of the universal church, it would not be permissible to initiate new structures, new official structures. In other words, it's the universal church that is going to determine how um structures function on the local level. And I do think that we need to return to a better understanding of synodality, um, not in the way that the Germans see it, though. And that's what they are attempting to correct here. So prior to an agreed understanding of the universal church, it would not be permissible to initiate new official structures or doctrine and diocese. In other words, the German bishops don't have the authority to issue doctrinal statements in their own territories as as far as um the entire territory now each individual bishop can teach authoritatively in their own diocese but they never do so infallibly and it has to be in accord with what the universal magisterium teaches they can't teach contrary to that and that's what this is reiterating uh, whether it's through the German bishops' conference or just as individual bishops, they cannot go against the universal teachings of the church. It continues, which would require a wound to ecclesial communion. So this it's saying this attempt of theirs to initiate new structures and governance in the church in Germany and new doctrines is a wound to ecclesial communion. And that's true because it's not in accord with the universal body of Christ. So it's creating a problem. And it says, in a threat to the unity of the church. Good. Very good. That's 100% true. Um, what some of the German bishops are doing is certainly a threat to the unity of the church. 
As the Holy Father recalled in his letter to the pilgrim people of God in Germany, the universal church lives in and of the particular churches, just as the particular churches live and flourish in and from the universal church. If they find themselves separated from the entire ecclesial body, which that's what they're moving for, they weaken, rot, and die. That's true. And we've seen churches and countries that have died, that have fallen away from the faith, that have had their candlestick removed, as uh, sacred scripture says. We've seen that before, and it looks like they're trying to head for that direction. Hopefully, um, the Holy See will continue to rein them in, and that won't happen. Hence, the need always to ensure that communion with the whole body of the church is alive and effective. What are they saying? Or what's Pope Francis implying? Well, that they are straying away from this communion. It is therefore hoped that the proposals of the way of the particular churches in Germany will converge with the synodal path being followed by the universal church. In other words, they need to be in line with the universal church and the way that it is functioning. And it continues for mutual enrichment and a testimony of that unity with which the body of the church manifests its fidelity to Christ the Lord. So if they want to be faithful to Christ the Lord, they need to be united to the universal church in its way of governance and in the faith. Very short statement, but hey, glad to see it. Hope it continues. Like I said, I think more work needs to be done, but I'll take it. Here's an article reporting this uh this news by the national catholic register kind of gives you a summary of the situation here vatican warning germany's synodal way poses threat to the uni unity of the church it says the vatican has issued another warning of a new schism from germany coming out of the synodal way and that's certainly the case um the schism is especially defined as um, a rupture in communion with the Pope or with those who are in communion with the Pope. The synodal way in Germany does not have the power to compel bishops and the faithful to adopt new forms of governance and new orientations of doctrine and morals, the Vatican said in an official statement published in Italian and German on Thursday. You can notice the wording is slightly different here uh, than it was in what I just read. But the meaning is effectively the same, um, although there, there's that new orientations clarification here, new orientations of doctrine and morals. That's certainly what some of the German bishops are aiming to do, and that is most, um, most assuredly excluded. <laughs> the Holy See said it seemed necessary to clarify this in order to safeguard the freedom of the people of God and the exercise of the Episcopal ministry. The Vatican warned it would not be permissible to introduce new official structures or doctrines in dioceses before an agreement had been reached at the level of the universal church, which would constitute a violation of ecclesial communion and a threat to the uni unity of the church. The synodal way, sometimes translated as synodal path, is a controversial process initiated by Cardinal Marx, who attempted to resign not long ago, and unfortunately, Pope Francis allowed him to continue, which I don't think was a good move. Again, I think that we could charitably criticize the Holy Father and some of his actions. I think that's one of them. Organized by the German Bishops' Conference together with the Central Committee of German Catholics, its aim is to discuss four main topics. The way power is exercised in the church, the priesthood, the role of women, and sexual morality. Writing about the process, Pope Francis warned of disunity in the letter to German Catholics in 2019. Cardinal Casper, a German theologian considered close to Pope Francis in June 2022, warned that the German process is at risk of breaking its own neck if it does not heed the objections raised by a growing number of bishops around the world. <laughs> Look, it's not good when even Cardinal Casper... <laughs> <laughs> is having to uh, raise some concerns. <laughs> 
In April, more than 100 cardinals and bishops from around, around the world released a fraternal open letter to Germany's bishops, warning that sweeping changes to church teachings advocated the process or by the process may lead to schism. And, and that's because, again, they um, the German bishops are creating a rupture with the other bishops who are not in agreement, not all of them certainly, are not in agreement with the direction that the Germans are going. Um, not that all of the German bishops are in agreement with the synodal path. In March, an open letter from the Nordic bishops expressed alarm at the German process. And in February, a strongly worded letter from the president of Poland's Catholic Bishops Conference raised serious concerns. And look, it's nice to raise concerns. And I know that they don't have any authority. The Norman, Nordic bishops don't have authority over the German bishops. And Poland doesn't have authority over the German bishops. It's good to hear their thoughts. It's good to hear their concerns. But ultimately, the one that has the authority over the German bishops is going to be the Holy Father. At some point, he's going to have to really put his foot down and put teeth behind this. It's good that we are seeing what we see here from the Holy See. It's good that they're saying, look, you're wrong. You don't have this authority. Um, but if they continue in that direction, the Holy Father is going to actually need to put teeth behind this. He can't, he can't just continue to let them go in this direction. I think what, you know, Pope Francis's policy is right or wrong, and it certainly isn't always the case, but I think what he tends to attempt to do is allow, you know, bishops a lot of leeway um, so that he is not just coming down and, you know, dropping the gauntlet and being overbearing. However... There have been some instances where it seems that he has done that. Um, now, we might criticize him there and say, I think you're giving them too much leeway. You need to actually um, go and put teeth behind what you're saying and issue disciplinary measures. I think we're pretty much at that point, if we haven't already been at that point. Um, which, ultimately, I do think that the Pope is going to do. I, I, if I had to guess... I think the German bishops will will probably continue to try to push the envelope, um, and the Holy See is going to actually have to, you know, do something rather than just issue statements. We'll see though. The president of the German Bishops Conference, Bishop George Batzing of Limburg, hope I pronounced that correctly, has repeatedly rejected any and all concerns. Instead, expressing disappointment in Pope Francis in May 2022. Well, hey, you know what? <laughs> I, th I think we might all be disappointed to, to one extent or another there. Um, at the same time, I understand, uh, and I could only imagine, it's really hard being Pope. <laughs> um, I could only imagine all of the uh, things that one has to do to be um, a good shepherd. So it's easy to criticize the Holy Father. And so I want to be respectful there, and I want to be careful not to overly criticize him. I don't think really anybody is happy with this pontificate. I, I don't think that those who are faithful to the church and its tradition, I don't think they're happy with the current pontificate. And those who are incredibly liberal, who want to overturn everything, I don't think they're really happy either with the current pontificate. I, I don't know if anybody really is, um, aside from a few rare exceptions. All right, moving forward. More recently, another organizer of the German process said the Synodal Way wanted to change the church's teaching on homosexuality by proposing a conscious statement against the current Catholic catechism. Well, look, um, th this isn't a good argument. If, if, if we're going to criticize the German bishops, please don't criticize them as going against the catechism. You're falling into a trap. Because somebody is going to rightly point out the catechism in and of itself is not authoritative. It, it's not magisterially authoritative. It's the sources that it relies on that are magisterially authoritative. So what you need to do is if you're going to criticize um, the German bishops and those who are opposed to what the catechism expresses on same-sex unions and same-sex acts, you don't want to do so on grounds that it's against the catechism. You're just falling into their trap. What you want to do is do so on the grounds that this is contrary to what the magisterium has authoritatively taught. 
And it's especially contrary to the ordinary and universal magisterium on this issue. And you want to point to that as evidence, not the catechism. You're going to fall right into their trap and they'll just say, look, not everything in the catechism is definitive. Look, the catechism in and of itself is not absolutely authoritative. It's not um, expressing something. Well, it could be reiterating something that's magisterial, but just because it's in the catechism doesn't mean that it is magisterially authoritative or increases the weight of its teaching. I mean, there's a lot of ways they could respond and they're technically right, but that argument on their part is irrelevant because what the catechism is expressing is based on the ordinary and universal magisterium, which you cannot question. That is definitive. But it's not definitive on basis of the catechism. It's definitive on the basis of the ordinary and universal magisterium. And that's what you need to argue whenever you're going to defend the traditional teaching of the church on these issues. So just don't open yourself up um, for that pushback. It says he pointed to a text which not only contained comments about changing views on homosexuality, but also about masturbation, marriage, sexual lust, and other related topics pertinent to Catholic doctrine. In the statement published Thursday, the Vatican repeated a passage from the Pope's letter published in 2019 wherein Francis had warned in German on particular churches being separated from the universal church, adding that in such instances they would weaken, perish, and die, which again was reiterated by the Holy See. The Holy See said proposals from Germany should rather flow into the synodal process of the universal church in order to contribute to mutual enrichment and to give witness to the unity with which the body of the church manifests its fidelity to Christ the Lord. And I don't think that the um, synod on synodality is going to end up backing up what the Germans are doing. This is certainly not what the Pope promulgates. Um, maybe some of the bishops in the uh, who participate in the Synod on Synodality would be in favor of what the Germans are doing, and we'll try to push that. Um, but certainly the Synod doesn't actually have any particular magisterial authority. It's only what the Pope issues from that Synod. The Synod um, is not effectively an advisory body. And it's a good idea because, I mean, you, you, you don't want, I mean, you do want the Pope to be advised. You do want to, him to be informed. Um, now, sometimes he's poorly advised and poorly informed by some of these people. I get that. At the end of the, end of the day, though, he is going to issue something that is authoritative and magisterial. And that, however, is going to be protected by the Holy Spirit. At the very least, it would be considered safe. It won't be harmful to souls, destructive to souls. It wouldn't lead souls to hell, effectively if a person were to be obedient to what's promulgated, even if it's not promulgated definitively. Um, so we can maybe raise concerns about the direction of even the Synod on Synodality um, and some of the things that are upcoming with it and some of the people who are participating with it. At the end of the day, though, it doesn't have any authority. It's only what the Pope promulgates in his magisterium after the Synod and that will be protected by the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Synod itself won't, because it's not actually a part, of, a part of the magisterium, unless the Pope gives it magisterial authority, which he has not done. Um, it would be in, it, It's actually important to go and read the Code of Canon Law on um, the Synod of Bishops, and it will, it will lay that out for you as far as their authority. And again, it's going to reiterate that they don't have magisterial authority unless the Pope invests um, the Synod with that authority. It's only, obviously, the Pope who has authority in what he promulgates, usually after the Synod, um, in a post-Synodal apostolic exhortation. Anyways, uh, back to what we were saying there, just wrapping it up. Happy to see this. I think that the Holy See has more work to do. Hopefully it will continue to <laughs> continue to uh, you know rein them in. I think it will. Um, I think the Holy Father is still going to give them some more leeway in some areas, and then eventually is going to have to uh, put his foot down. Um, but 
I guess we'll we'll see what happens in the future. But a little bit of good news for us so far on Friday. I'll take it as a, a, a small a small victory here. Appreciate y'all watching. We're gonna have another uh, couple shows today, so y'all make sure to check those out. I'm not gonna tell you um, the one this evening what the topic is yet. You'll you'll have to wait for that surprise. But I do have um, uh, I do have uh, Steve from uh, St. Paul's evangelization um, ministry street uh, preacher ministry who's going to be coming on in just a little bit telling us about not only his ministry but also how to evangelize people so look forward to that that will probably be in an hour or so so all right we will see y'all later hey hit that like button hit the subscribe button also check me out at patreon.com forward slash reason in theology see you later god bless Oh wait, before you go, I would really appreciate it if you would consider supporting this channel. This is my primary means to provide for my family, and it also helps me to produce content like this video. If you would like to support me, become a patron by visiting patreon.com forward slash reason and theology. You'll also get access to extra exclusive content when you become a patron. Lastly, hit that like button and the subscribe button, and be sure to leave a comment down below. God bless.